Hello. I think I got it to work this time. Maybe. I hope. It says I'm live streaming. Okay. I can see some things here. I can see the chat. Oh, so the chat's right in here. This is my first time, so I'm figuring all of this out. Uh, if you could put in the chat that you can see me, that would be fantastic. So I know if this is working. <laughs> it looks like maybe it's working. Hi, Annie. Hello. Okay, I am live. Fantastic. And you guys can only see me at the moment, which is fine. Like it works. Oh, this is so interesting. It's so weird to see myself like on a delay. And then, yeah, I just did something that I did 30 seconds ago. Okay, I'm definitely not going to have to watch that. I'm going to have to <laughs> move the chat over. <laughs> Give me one second while I get these screens figured out. Okay, now we have the chat on the right hand side. Oh, this is better. Okay, this is a little bit better here. All right, so let me go ahead and share my screen because I got that set up already. I think like this. All right, can you all see my screen now? I'll wait for the chat to catch up here. Are we able to see the screen? It should be just a, um, uh, right now it's a Google Doc. I'll wait for just a few seconds to see if everyone can see the screen. Make this a little bit smaller for me on my screen. Okay, so everyone can see the documents. Cool. Thank you so much for, for saying so. Okay, this is perfect. Okay, so I'm author Elizabeth Ann West. Welcome to the very first live stream of Writing with Pseudo Write. And this is a little bit different because I am actually going to be working on my manuscript. So um, I have supplies. Those are the important parts. So I have tea and I also have Oreo cookies. So we have the supplies for, for what comes next. Um, yes, I am in the the lower part, and yes, I am minimized on the left side. Great. I'm going to be following the chat. So if I if I say something and it sounds like non sequitur, it's because I'm reading the chat. So uh, a few things. You should now see the pseudo write screen, and uh, a little bit. This is going to be a little bit different than some of what you've seen in class because this document is so old. <laughs> it was started on pseudo write before we had projects. Um, so basically, I have the entire story in one long document. Those who might remember that uh, earlier in PseudoWrite, you would just have like individual documents. We didn't have the ability to put them into projects and everything. Now we can, and you'll see I have a couple of different uh, tabs in here. One of the things that I've done on this manuscript is I've run the shrink ray option, which I'm sharing just so that you guys can get an idea of what it is that I'm writing. This particular book is book six of my Moralities of Marriage series. So I'm trying to wrap that up. Um, Lady Catherine de Bourgh died in book five. This whole series imagines what if Mr. Wickham was the natural son of Sir Louis de Bourgh and another member of the aristocracy, the sister-in-law of the Duke of Marlborough. And that's why he got sent to Pemberley to live and go to school with Darcy and everything like that, because he's actually um, technically a cousin, but he was born on the wrong side of the bed, which often happened back then. So he was born out of, mayor, out of, out of wedlock. Uh, he's just the child of an affair. Um, so... I imagined what if Sir Louis de Bourgh was crazy in his last few years um, with syphilis. And so he actually wrote a will that said if Anne de Bourgh did not have a child, then George Wickham would inherit the estate. And uh, the other complication in the series is that George Wickham ran off with Georgiana. She wasn't saved. Um, and so the family forced her to get married. And in book four, George Wickham was shot dead in London with Georgiana right next to her, right next to him, because he got involved in a mining scheme with Lord Strange. So there's like a Ponzi scheme. There's like this mystery of the will. This is a very action-packed, dramatic book series. So that's just the, the context for you all. So when you're watching me right here. Um, so I'm going to be working today in, I just did this right here. I wrote a scene where Kitty was um, kind of, uh, hit on really icky, squicky by Lord Bromington. Lord Bromington is, I'm imagining, the eldest son of uh, the Earl of Matlock, which is Darcy's uh, uncle. And Lord Bromington is a lout. Like, he's just horrible. Um, he is married to a woman um, who's wonderful, 
Uh, but I do, I did cast her as being um, a lesbian. So she has a maid that in her marriage contract gets to travel with her and stay with her at all times. Um, they're not expected to have children, for example. And uh, Lord Bromington himself is actually like at one point, I think in the story, the Earl of Matlock has to go take him from a heroin den or something, an opium den or something like that. So he's, he's just terrible. So he walked into Kitty's studio. Oh, by the way, this is book six. Uh, so Longbourn actually burned down in book four, I think, book four or book five. I can't remember. But Longbourn's burned down. And so the, Pem the Bennets are living at Pemberley. And Mr. Bennet was severely injured. Okay. Jane and Bingley have twins. So when Kitty walked, the previous scene before this, Kitty left her studio with Viscount Bromington coming in uninvited and asked me to paint him. She got away. She's in the nursery now. Jane's ticked. She's like, oh no, I'm going to deal with this. And then, um, so that's where we're at. And what I need to do next, because there's going to be a ball, I need to get these women to a suite. I already wrote where Jane had invited her right here. Um, but I need to connect these because I'm actually going to make this be the end of a chapter. And then that's going to start a new chapter. So that's what I'm working on right now. Okay. So we are 106. And let's go ahead and start a timer until I take the next break to see where I get with the words here. So clock. This is something I do. I'm just doing a stopwatch. So I'm just going to record because I'm going to start working. And I'll narrate as I go and I will check the, the, um, the chat. So since I put a note right here for myself, expand this here. So Jane nodded and handed Linda her nurse with a quiet sigh of relief. Settled into her brother's next to... Charles. Um, moments later, both babies were fast to sleep again, their little chest rising up and down softly with every breath. Okay. Just so you know, I'm writing draft here. This is not, this is not final draft material. So you'll see me kind of go fast and loose with the AI. It doesn't mean that that's necessarily what gets published. It's just, I'm trying to get words on the page at this point. And before we start, we'll, we'll notate what we started with. We are at 31,704 words. So I'll write that down and we'll see where we end up. Okay. So yeah, I need to expand that. Uh, let's just put a command in here. So I'm going to kind of put this here. So since I know that we're doing this information here, I'm going to actually put that expand command with this information here. So I have at 80 words and I'm just going to click expand. So it'll take that into consideration. And it assumed that I have them getting ready. Okay. So that was kind of like a fail on my part. I didn't have my prompt very well. Let's see here. I'm just going to write it. This is just faster. I know I made a mistake. How she did not. Okay, let me see here. I think there was a part here where they talked about... Why is hesitated? Oh, because it's misspelled. Trip to see Buxton Hall. Yeah, Jane and them are getting ready to move. Just Mr. Simmons... So Kitty actually saw, so there's another thing going on here where there's disputed land in Peverly between the Earl of Derby and some guy fell and broke his legs. And that's where the doctor Matthew is. They had to go there and then they came back, but then Kitty watched them send like armed guards and more supplies. So she was basically spying. Well, not intentionally spying, but she saw it. Um, so what happened? I made a mistake. How she did not. Miss Bingley said one of the nurses looking at Jane carefully. She handed it in to the nurse. Okay. I'll just add the dialogue. Being whispered. And I'm going to go down here.
We don't need that bit. That's kind of silly. Um, yeah, I want this. I think I want to have them leave the nursery. So I think they'd say this out in the hall. Or carefully. I don't want that part. Um, Jane waited for the maid to open the, north, the nursery door carefully, and the two sisters stepped out into the hall. Now I will go grab that piece of dialogue that I had of the nonsense. And then brightened. Okay. Yep, I'm going to control X that because I like it. And then stepped out into the hall, put this in here. I wrote this before. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get back into my, into my boards here. Um, oh, curious about this. Okay. So this is good. Um, let me, let me do that. Cause I didn't, I'll get the AI words as well. So we can compare that too. That's a good question in the, in the chat. So I'm at, we won't count that expand that I didn't even use. 647, 489 is where I'm at. So we'll see where I'm at at the end of the session versus how many words I actually generate. Good call. Thank you. And if you do have to leave the live stream, I'll make sure that I put that information um, kind of like in the chat or in the description or something when we're done. Sorry, this is like paint drawing. I was wor worried about this. I'm trying to get into it. And this is this is very different. I've never written like this before. <laughs> Buxton's not far. That's where they were going. A little distance between, a little less than the distance between Longboard and Chiefs. But we rarely visit Anarcho or the Mus, only twice, once or twice a year. Um... So I like this. They would not ask about that in the hall. So that's going to be later. Uh, actually, I'm not going to be able to use that line. Okay. So we're in the hall only once or twice a year. I like this. Jane reached out. So she didn't have to get uh, consent necessarily. Uh, once there. She pulled the, um, the bell cord and summoned her maid. While the two sisters waited, Jane, I have it right here, she called the reason Katie, Kitty came to her in the first place. Jane, by the way, I haven't written on this scene in like months. So that's another reason why I'm trying to recall. the reason Kitty came to her in the first place. And now I need the dialogue from there. Did Lord Bromley to make any advances on you? More than once he placed himself very close. That was very wise. I'm sorry, I should have gone to Lizzie. Yep, I like all of this. He was improper and delicate, but he did not harm you, nor will he. Okay, I like this. I think that's good. And then we'll have the maid arrive. So, boop -a doo bump this down. Paste it, go up. Where did it go? Just to make sure she recalled. Yeah, so that should be a new paragraph. That's what I thought. Um. About Lord Bromington. Um, so have Miss Catherine's items for the ball fetched by her maid and brought here. My sister and I will. So get ready together. That is so not Regency. So let's go ahead and use a rewrite. Uh, rewrite. Oh, I need at least 10 words. Okay. So we'll just rework all of that. And we'll rewrite. And I'm just going to say customize. Rewrite to sound more like Jane Austen. Oh. 
uh, accoutrements for the ball assembled and brought hither by her. Okay, that went a little too far. We don't, okay, that, and this is why customize doesn't always work. So I'm not going to use that. Um, rewrite to more like 1812 England. Let's try that. I'm not going to send forth. Okay. Here we go. My sister and I will prepare for this evening together. Yeah, we'll go with that. That that works because I was really drawing a blank on that dialogue. So we'll put that there. We'll prepare for um, this evening together. Or the ball this evening together. There we go. Sounds good for a modern reader. Um, have Miss Catherine's items. So I don't like items. I don't like accoutrements either. Let's go 23 more and we'll see what we've got here. Yeah, it thinks. Okay, so let me escape out of that. Sure, we'll do collectibles, although we don't want that one. I will say accoutrements and we'll get a better word for accoutrements. So I just want accoutrements and then I can, usually I can get the word cloud. Oh, it thinks it's misspelled. Okay, <laughs> Doodads, gizmos. Oh, good gravy. Effects. There we go. That that sounds good. Have Miss Catherine's effects for the ball fetched by her maid and brought here. My sister and I will prepare for the for the ball. Okay, we'll prepare for this evening together. So since I have ball in the first paragraph in the first line of dialogue, I don't need it again in the second line of dialogue. Yes, ma'am, the maid said, obediently not questioning the change. Okay, perfect. And we already have all of this information here. And I think he will pay dearly was where I ended. Yes, that's where I ended. So I'm going to delete that out of there and then bring this up. You know, so far, we're not really making gains on the words at all. Uh, we, we, we've gained all of 21 words. <laughs> this is the horrible thing about write, reading, uh, of uh, editing here. Okay. Kitty took a deep breath, finally, uh, finally feeling, oh my gosh, my crutch words. This is embarrassing. Feeling relieved that she had not misstepped or misunderstood the severity of the situation. She had never seen Jane angry or displeased, but if nothing else, they could always, um, I think I need to say the maid left. The maid said obediently, not questioning the change. alone in the suite once more kitty took a deep breath feeling relieved she'd never seen jane angry or displeased but if nothing else they could um i just am going to rewrite this i don't like it let's uh more inner conflict and click go welcome ml yes first time for everybody um, while we're waiting on the AI to do here. Okay. Ooh, here we go. Kitty took a deep breath, feeling relieved, but uncertain. Jane had never been angry or displeased before, but there was no telling what could happen if Lord Bromington didn't accept their terms. Twisted or not. And she, okay, I like this. I like pieces of this. And that's kind of like how I always write with the AI. Kitty held her breath, hoping. No, I don't think that this is right. I think this is a right line. So I'm going to kind of laser change this. but uncertain. She had never seen Jane angry or displeased. I think that that's right. And then, but there was no telling. Yeah, I think. So angry or displeased. There we go. So we'll take that. And then I like how this was worded too. Kitty's stomach twisted in knots. I like this part. Okay. Before Kitty could tell Jane anything else, I don't think there would be anything else. Before Kitty could tell Jane about what she saw or what she spied.
and I don't need about here. But she spied of the wagon on the great lawn. Sturdy knock on the door signaled that the staff had completed just as Miss Bingley wished. Or the staff had. Okay, rewrite. I don't know. Shorter. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Let's make it shorter. Perfect. A knock on the door. There we go. And now I need a transition here. More dialogue and action between Jane and Kitty uh, before Elizabeth arrives. Elizabeth arrives. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to get this line and I'm going to get the command here because I need the transition and then I need, um, I don't think I need the top part actually. We're just going to click expand. Okay, Leland, <laughs> I have zero. Am I doing okay by narrating what I'm doing? I, it feels a little weird for me to like explain my thought processes here, but I'm trying to not make this look boring. Okay, so it has Elizabeth. So this, it got confused. It thought that Elizabeth is, is going to do that. So maybe I just highlight this and click expand because it it had Lizzie come in. There we go. We got it. So that was a mistake. And then I got a better commit. So that was a mistake I made. I prompted it originally with write more dialogue and action between Jane and Kitty before Elizabeth arrives. Not 15 minutes later, Elizabeth appeared amused to see her two sisters getting ready for the ball. That's the only context it really had. And so then it just like jumped to Lizzie being there by taking out the not 15 minutes later and just the command, I'm getting a much better result of like something I can do. I like it that it was pounding. Um, and this works perfectly with where that, 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 uh, knock came a little fast. Okay. I can slow down a little bit. Sorry if I'm talking too quickly. I'll, I'll slow down. So Kitty's heart was pounding as Jane opened the door. The maid, uh, change out the hat. Uh, the maid arrived with her and we don't say dress. They didn't call it that back then. It was a gown. Uh, dress was only a verb. Stood with it in her arms, waiting for Jane to take it. Jane took a deep breath, calming herself before. Okay. There's a lot of calming breaths here, people. Oh, uh, okay. And actually Jane wouldn't take it. The maid would bring it in. His heart was pounding as Jane opened the door. Um, Kitty's maid had arrived with her gown for the ball and stood with it in her arms. Further instructions. Let's do that. Oh, perfect. She is going to talk about the wagon. Fantastic. I'm going to change as they worked. No, Lord Browning did not pass quite. So I like this bit here. Okay. And I'll, I'll do another transition here. This is a trick I do all the time. I don't know what goes here. Write a transition. And now I will grab, you have to grab at least 100 words. That's 73, so I can grab more. And click expand. And now it'll just write a transition in the middle there. Oh, it thinks I want the wagon. Okay, so I, I highlighted too much. <laughs> Thank you very much for the support there. Okay, so let's do this. Expand. Okay, there we go. Now, this is interesting, but I didn't. And this is where I don't think. 
So this is a limitation of the AI. It's not its fault. It's mine. There's way too much going on in my scene and information about the story that the AI is just not able to quite capture exactly what I'm looking for. And this is where I talk about you can fall down the trap of like trying to get the AI to write everything. So what do I need to do? I just need to write it. Um, so Kitty's maid had arrived for her gown for the ball and stood with it in her arms waiting for their instructions. I kind of want more stuff there, though, as they worked. Maybe I could just use guided right. That's a good idea. Let me go to guided right. I'm not going to ask for suggestions. Go away. I don't want you. We'll just go here and I'll just say. Um, ready for a ball. That's what I'm going to do. I just asked for a command there. Of describe. Yeah, guided right with examples. Good, good question. Good answer. Yep. See, and even I sometimes struggle with like, which tool do I pick up when I want to do it? Ooh, I like it. She then motioned for her own maid to bring in the box. Oh, with the jewelry. Oh, yes. I love this. We love jewels. <laughs> yes, I like it. Okay. And we have it. Okay. I'm going to cut the hair part because I know that they're going to go to Elizabeth's suite and that's where they can get their hair finished. So I like this. This is perfect. The sisters exchanged glances and Jane instructed Kitty's maid to help. Oh, and I'm going to put in here, the sisters exchanged glances and Kitty immediately knew, recognized she must allow Jane to take the lead. Playing mistress of her suite at Pemberley. Jane instructed Kitty's maid. Um, Perfect. I think that's starting to paint the picture there. She then motioned for her own maid to bring in the box with, with jewelry. Okay, there we go. Um, I think, you know, the gossip. I like the I gossip. So let's put this here. As they worked, I'll put that here. Do you know who was in it? Kitty shook her head no. And this is perfect. Just as another, uh, this time unexpectedly. Perfect. Okay, we'll take this out. I mean, it's great that they described the gowns, but actually, so I will control X that and I will put it in scraps. Oh. I don't know if I'll use it later. Jane and Kitty's gown. There we go. All right, we're back into this one. <laughs> the doors opened and Elizabeth appeared. Elizabeth Darcy, that is. Kitty suspected that one of the staff had alert Higgins is um, Elizabeth Darcy's private uh, private made just as every detail seemed to travel um there we go that's two sentences i have a tendency to write long every detail seemed to travel through the halls of pemberley without hindrance okay i have a summarization here uh yeah you can search the scraps using control f Okay, I'm going to check the, the chat here. The AI seems to accept items in X as instructions rather than part of the prose. Yeah, I did I did that. I was using parentheses, but I still, sometimes it just gets confused. And it is a very tough scene here. So right here I have easily Jane explained and this caused the mistress of the house to tear up. I think that this should either be a show, not tell. Uh, let's see, show, not tell and go and see what it'll do. Okay. 
Okay. So that's where it's just doing that. It didn't quite do what I wanted it to do. I want it to have a dialogue and everything. So I'm going to customize, rewrite to uh, add dialogue. Let's try that. Add dialogue and sound more like a chapter in a Regency romance. I add that uh, extra command there of like and sound more like a chapter in a Regency romance. So it knows like I'm looking for a uh, like an exchange between characters. I have found that that helps. And you'll see that it, it it's starting to do that. Um, it won't be the same without you. Once Mr. Bingley and I have our own estate, our visits will be few and far between. Tears glistened. Yes, I suppose. All right, let's see here. It won't be the same. Okay, so I'm going to change that a little bit. There's no Mrs. Bennett. I like this. Although I'm supposed to be from Jane's point of or Kitty's point of view. Uh, that's where it gets ch tricky. I do write third person omniscient, so we'll just fix it in the edits. Put that here. Let's have Elizabeth have dialogue here. Uh, I don't know if she would ask if the sweets would be inadequate. Uh, oh, yeah, but something funny along those lines. Let's see here. Hopefully... Okay, so it's not going to be, it won't be the same anymore. Um, toys, certainly. After Mr. Bingley and I acquire our own estate, Jane explained, her voice quavering. Um, and this should not be Oh, gotta fix the quotations here. Do do do. And I'm going to cut it off. I always mix this up. Nope, that's not it. It's option. Yeah, so you get the M dash. I always accidentally press command instead of option. So I want her cut off. Um, I apologize. I had not thought of that. Elizabeth began, and both Kitty and Jane reassured her that it had not occurred to them either until the last moment. Um the impending separation of the sisters. Um, we need to check the chat here. I know stuff's going on here. Uh, writing live, kudos to you. You can ask for body language. Ooh, you can. Okay, that's a good idea. Let's do that. Um, possibly, yes, we are working on a lore book for that. I do use pseudo write with ChatGPT as well. Right now I'm editing. I, ChatGPT wouldn't help me with this edit because it's kind of like a scatter, uh, like a shotgun blast. You either get a whole bunch of words or you don't. You can't really do. Yeah. You can't really do like what I'm doing right here where I'm nuancing and going down into like the individual chat line and everything like that. Um, okay. So what about... Accepting a handkerchief from her maid Higgins, Elizabeth forced a smile. Um,
What about on Lydia and Mary? Lydia and Mary. Lydia and Mary. Lydia asked. Elizabeth laughed. Of course, I wouldn't exclude them. <laughs> All right. Um, let's take the servant stairs because I, I, this goes to the architecture. I've already planned. They're on the third floor. I'll show you the secret way and. Um, whispering to her maid Higgins. Uh, uh, Okay, and then I want to describe the um, servant stairs. So I'm like, describe them going up the servants' stairs at Pemberley. In parentheses, I'm going to see. There we go. And then that's the next. That's a transition. It's still going to be the same chapter. So I'll just click expand on this and I'll check the chat. Okay, so we are handed on that. Yeah, world building. Yeah, pseudo write, I think, writes writes better with fiction and everything like that. Yep, lore book is coming. Um, we're aiming more for something that's more automatic. So like it automatically pulls the information from you so you don't have to hand code it. Okay, so we should have some expand here. Oh, I love that. With Elizabeth leading the procession, Jane and Kitty followed their sister as they walked down the hall to the back corner of Pemberley. As they rounded the corner, they were surprised to find a hidden staircase tucked away in a small alcove. Elizabeth motioned for them to follow her up, and soon they had reached the second floor landing. Actually, it's the third floor landing, but we'll fix it. Gas lamps. Eh, I don't know about the gas lamps. I don't think so. I think it's more candles still. This is 1812. Oh, I love this. I don't think that this is... Okay, so we have that. I like it. Uh, not from the years past. They hadn't been together for that long. We'll just go with this. This is good. And then I'll take out to my sweet Elizabeth said. They began a parade out of the Bingley suite. That works. In the procession. The hallway was lit by candelabra. Uh, sconces? Can't, uh, I don't know what it would be called. We'll put sconces. Um, which create a warm glow on the portraits lining the walls. Okay. And then I'll take out this part. This is actually chapter 15, which I thought I did a... Oh, I didn't do the new chapter thing. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Oops. I knew I got busy just... Oh, man. Ugh. This is what the whole point of what I was trying to do. I was trying to take a really long chapter and break it into smaller, and I just made it longer. So we needed to cut it off way back up here, I think. Padded Lynn. Fitzwilliam. No, just Mr. Simmons. Okay. Hmm. Hush, you did not. Dag nabbit, where am I going to cut it off at? Yeah, 
this is frustrating. Somebody's got, yeah. Uh, probably the second one, Alex, but don't hold me to it. Functioning over speed of delivery. Yeah. Okay. Both babies. You know what? We're just going to put it here. Chapter 15. <laughs> that works. The babies are sleeping. And then the next chapter, the, the readers would be like, okay, what's going to happen next? Because it's in the middle and that works. Okay. So that's chapter 15 right there. And now I can see how many words this is. All the way down. Because I knew I had all of this and absolute right. I haven't edited that. 1500 words. Good. Okay. So then I can just do the, the bottom half of it to expand out. All right. I'm going to pause it here because I'm at 35 minutes and we'll see where we are at total. Okay. So we began this little excursion and it was heavily editing. So we now have 32,130 words. We had 704. This is kind of embarrassing, but that's okay. Basically I have added 434 words to my manuscript. There was a lot of editing and we'll look at the difference in my editing here. 645, 326. So if I subtract those with a calculator, I started this exercise with 647,489 words in my quota. And I now have 640, not 345, Elizabeth, 645, 326 left. So basically I've used 2,163 words of um, AI generation for 434. So that's kind of a one to five ratio. That is a very high ratio, which I often find happens when I'm doing editing like I am right now, where I'm having to try to like work with what I've got. I'm not going to continue working with this particular chapter because I think that there's more work to be done on that back part and that's fine. I'm going to skip ahead to the ball. So now we'll move into um, a session where I'm actually creating from scratch. Does anyone have any questions so far about the different tools that I have pulled up for uh, when I was working or writing or, or making edits? And I can wait a minute for any, I'm just pausing for a few minutes to give a chance for any questions about what I've done before I start moving into writing a whole new screen scene from scratch. Nope. Okay. Yeah. So there was, it was, but that was the point of this. Yeah. Thank you, Michelle. I was, I was doing a lot of work back and forth. Uh, so now we're going to move into writing a whole new scene and here we go. So what I like to do for a whole new scene is I like to use first draft. This is also where you could use chat GPT, but I like first draft. So I'm going to add new and I'm going to call this the ballroom scene. Now I have in moralities of marriage, I have over here, I just changed over to my actual manuscript. So what I would need to do is, um, Lady Bromington. Okay. So I had the start of some of this. Um, for the ball. And actually I could find out, I could copy and paste. So this is my manuscript. I do write in Google docs. So this one, the total thing is at 33, 136. So it's got some language, some words that aren't in the other one. Um, and that's okay. That's from previous, previous works. So I need to write the ballroom. And before I do that, let me go up to my, this is how I would work before pseudo write really kind of existed and how I do my outlines. So this is how I, I work where I actually put like an outline of, so chapter 13, Lord Bromington hits on Kitty wandering into her studio. Then I have actually, this is why it's new. So this is actually chapter 14. And I, I go back and forth. So as I start writing more scenes, because the characters are like, we're doing this now. I'm like that's not in the outline. Get back over here. I don't make my characters stick just to my outline. I will change my outline to match whatever my characters decided to do in the moment that I was writing. So she reported to Jane, the girls, uh, Kitty actually goes to, she reports it to Jane, 
in chapter 14, actually. And then chapter 15, all of the Bennett sisters plus Lady Bromington get ready for the ball in Elizabeth's uh, suite. Okay, so this is going to be tough because this is going to be a huge ensemble thing here. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to work on it. Um, let me see here. I'm ch checking on this. I'm interested in how you use the command with the expand. You started at the beginning of the video and then, but then wrote it out and said, so I did it a couple of other times in the video too, where I just put it in parentheses and clicked expand of what I wanted. And it was kind of hit or miss if I got it. And that was mostly on my, my fault. Have you fleshed out all the chapter summaries in an outline first with pseudo write? No, because that, that did not exist when I started to work on this. This was, this outline here is literally like my outline that I created because this was written at a time. I mean, this, this document, this is embarrassing how old this is. I don't usually take this long to write. Yeah, this is from September of 2022. The, uh, when I started this document, there was no, there was no, uh, outlining or anything like that. Actually, chat GPT didn't even exist when I started this. Okay. Or new characters. Yep. All right. I think you guys are good. I'm going to move on to what I'm doing here. Um, oh, you're welcome, Alex. So I have chapter 15. So now we're going to move into chapter 16, which is the ball. And I have a lot of information about the ball here because the ball is going to be multiple chapters and it's, it's, it's got political intrigue and all of that. The ball is to begin. Mrs. Darcy asks her husband how, how the man fares. That's the man at Derby. Um, he will live well. That will make things easier. Mr. and Mrs. Darcy open the ball. Elizabeth wants to enjoy it. But she spies things out of the corner of her eye that distress her. Kitty's not dancing. Neither is Lord Bromington. Jane has eyes on her sister. So she's going to start to pick up that there's something hinky going on there. Okay, so I have an idea of what's going to happen. But let's just go ahead and get into the ball, right? Because this is like the, the tough part. This is a lot of notes here for me. Um, and, and I do this too, like <laughs> right here check in book one or two who's Lord strange marrying again perhaps it was called off like i have story bibles that i have to go back to and be like i don't know <laughs> what's happening okay but we're just going to get into the ball and the way i'm going to do that is i'm going to write a prompt for first draft that is going to allow me to get into the to the ballroom scene i'll fix that later so we'll go into pseudo write i'm going to do a new document so i can work on the prompt for this because i, I have an idea of what i want Okay, so I'm going to say write, uh, write, write a chapter for a Regency romance describing the gowns and appearance of the following women descending stairs at Pemberley. Oh my gosh, why can I not? <laughs> Too many E's, Elizabeth. Darcy's are throwing at in December 1813. Yeah, because we're past 1812. 1811 is when it started. Oh no, we're in 1812. Take that back. Prime Minister hasn't been shot yet. Um or maybe he was earlier that year. I can't remember. I'd have to go look that up. Following women descending the stairs. Uh, first is Kitty, who walks down with her sisters, Mary and Lydia. Then is Jane, with her husband, Mr. Bingley. And finally, Mr. and Mrs. Darcy. Walk down. Um, have there be conversation in the foyer between these characters as most of the guests are inside. There already was a reception line earlier because everybody arrived and they're staying at Pemberley. Um, get the ball started with Mr. Darcy and Elizabeth dancing together. Okay, so I have that information there. I'm also going to go ahead and grab, because why not, uh, from my outline here, 
Let's push the envelope of what it can actually do here. Um, Kitty's not dancing. Elizabeth spies. There we go. I'll put that there. Use lots of witty dialogue. And uh, descriptions of the of the setting. Okay, so I think we got that right. That we'll we'll see what it can do. We're gonna grab all of this. We're gonna come over to the ballroom scene, and we're gonna generate it. I just pop it in, and I click go. Okay. Nope, I have not used that tool usually because I like plotting and everything myself. Okay, waiting for it to go. I'm sorry, I'm reading the, ch the, ch uh, the chat here. Somebody asked if I use subtext AI to help with outlining and I, or Alex did and I did, I have not. Okay, cool. Deep purple. Yeah, they're not doing that, but I can fix it. Okay. That's not exactly what I wanted, but we've got something here. 500 words. I'm going to go the other way. <laughs> I'm going to try doing it this other way. So that was fine. 500 words. I think that this is going to work better. Uh, if I use the prompt that I have and here's what we're going to do. Um, I'm trying to think cause it can keep context. Maybe that's what I want it to do. So maybe I'll just do this. He could not come into his wife's room before the ball this time. Oh, and that harkens back to chapter four or book four where they, Anyway, there was things that happened between husband and wife before the ball. Uh, chapter, what, what are we on? Chapter 16? Yeah, chapter 16. So I'm here. And this is where I can use like the right guide. So I'm going to go to my right settings and we'll go three. And we want 250 words. I'm going to say, um, you know, I'm just going to say, this is the ball scene. Let's see what it can do. So now what it's going to do is it's going to read up and it's going to have a thousand words of context. And I'm just going to click auto and see what it does. I did ask it for three. My right settings, I did ask for three cards, 250. And my creativity, I don't have it super high because it doesn't control the creativity of the cards. It controls how closely it's got to stick to what I've already got. So that's what we're going to do. Ah, here we go. Perfect. See, that was so much easier. A waltz that's too early all right let's see what we've got here <sighs> okay I like definitely pieces of this no Meriton there's no Meriton um and a lot of times even though I don't use this stuff it just influences me I love the room was full of people so I think that's what I need to do. Okay. At the appointed hour. Down to the ballroom. Um, so I like this and, uh, a stately home in Derbyshire. Well, 
laughter and I don't know, sounds of people. You write that sentence. Go. Oh, I like that. Who are friends and not just acquaintances. Perfect. Okay. I promise. Kitty, Lydia, and Mary Bennett. over their appearances. Okay, so right here, I want to expand this. So I have this information. I'm just going to click expand because I want more information there. So I would say the unmarried Bennett sisters made their way slowly down things. There we go. Perfect. I love it. Um, I think I'm going to have she say, oh, my dear, you look so beautiful. And she's just speaking to Lydia because that's what Mrs. Bennett does. So I like this. Actually, I'm going to put it here. The unmarried Bennett sisters made their way slowly down the stairs, taking in every detail of the grand estate uh, of the evergreen The fresh scent of pine. There we go. Bottom of the stairs, waiting for them. Mrs. Bennett waited at the bottom. Perfect. Oh, my dear. Looks so beautiful. She said. Addressing Lydia. Mary frowned. Ma. I love it. That's perfect. The Duke of Devonshire, by the way, is in attendance here, and he is the Bachelor Duke. Um, do, 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 do. The Bingleys and the Darcys. I want her to be nervous. I know I had some language in here before that I could use. There we go. Um, 
Oh, Elizabeth's pregnant too. I forgot about that. She's very heavily pregnant. arm. A gesture her husband did not miss. Very odd <laughs> manner. Because I have this originally in the story. There we go. So we'll grab this, click expand. Okay. Yeah, it is really helping get past duck points. And I like that, like, I, I know I didn't use those words that I generated, but it helped when I was trying to get the ballroom scene of them at, at entering and everything like that. But it helped put me in the framework of like seeing this scene before me. Um, and that just helps me to create. And that that's really hard to quantify. Like I can tell you exactly how many words of the AI that I copy and paste. I can't tell you nearly how many words the AI actually uh, inspires me to, to get words written and everything like that. So... I like this. So I want that back into the, oh, and look, it's got the Earl and Countess of Darby. Darby were standing with their daughter. The daughter's not there, but it did bring those in. Uh, Durham Castle, I don't know if that's the right one. Okay, what's Lydia doing? <laughs> um, actually, I think Lord Bromington might try to slip away with Lydia because that goes back in line with that. And that, yeah, that that's an interesting complication and I like it. Um, they were not adults who could take care of themselves. That's not what's going to happen in this scene. Okay, so we'll do the tried and true. We'll actually, let me take off the parentheses. So it, when expand doesn't work for you, um, that's when it's like basically a job for guided right. And I just put guided right. Oh, and there's also one strategy too that you can use it for right, which is kind of interesting. So there's this information here. Oh, I like that. Do not worry. I'll keep, I know how to keep them out of trouble. That's perfect. I like this part here. Um, yes, it does often inspire me for new ideas. So another way that I can do this too is with that right detail. So right settings, I could put this in here and I'll do just two cards and click um, auto complete. So basically I put in the key details what I wanted. I really couldn't explain what percentage of the content. Uh, it depends. So sometimes when I'm writing, I will, if I have a really good clear idea of the scene, I'll get pseudo right to get started with it, 400 to 500 words, but then I'm, I'm changing all of them. Um, so as you've been seeing, so it's really hard to say like which percentage is the AI, but all of it is me because it's my ideas and it's my choice. And it's like, there are words there, but I mean, they are words. So Ooh, I love this. Mr. Darcy says you're beautiful. So this is where I, I'm kind of working on this. But I inspired it of what's going on, what's happening. Um, so, so I can't really answer what percentage. Sorry for that. Um, but I, it is, uh, it's definitely helped. Dictation, yes. Uh, dictation. So the faster is not directly... Um, like in a sprint mentality here. I am someone who really struggles to overcome 
the friction of writing again. Like if I haven't been written for writing for a while or anything like that, blank page itis really uh, stops me in my tracks. And the AI allows me to take a day that I don't want to write and just get two or 300 words on the page. And then once that happens, I can get going. Even if they're two to 300 words that I'm not going to keep or I'm going to have to build off of. So since there's a button that I can click that it can just start writing, um, which is that write command. But like, for example, right now, I was really struck. I was really stuck on this one part here. I was like, I don't know how he wants to ask. And he's asked a whole bunch of times. Notice that I think I got the best content right now because it could read up a thousand words. And then it also could read my key details. And this is practically exactly what I want to have. I mean, this is exactly what I wanted. Just about. You're beautiful, he said in an undertone, looking down at her with unguarded admiration. Elizabeth blushed. The group entered the ballroom and the tall, impressive ceiling of the Grand Hall shone from the various crystals and candles that had been hung from the chandeliers. The orchestra began to play a lively dance as the couples began to form. I like it. So I'm going to just copy and paste that in. Uh, so, yeah, it looked like, like, like being in a writer's roundtable and putting out ideas to the plot. Absolutely. So I would say that this is faster in the sense that I wrote three books in the year that the year prior to that, I had only written one. Um, and about dictation. So I do dictate my books a lot, although AI has kind of changed that for me because I use dictation as a way to get over my blank page itis for the most part, um, in addition to the pain that I would have. So even right now I had pain in my neck because I've been working a lot this week and I took some Tylenol before I came on this session, but it still hurts. It just does. It's just like an ache here. Um, and that's why I'm only going to do this for a little, for a little while longer and then say, love y'all, but I need to go lay on a heating pad. Um, <laughs> and these are the things that a lot of us deal with. Uh, I know I'm not the only one who writes with pain and deals with pain or migraines or anything like that. So I would dictate, I would close my eyes and I would dictate a scene. And that was a way that I would, when I would transcribe it, cause I would always dictate and not be able to see the words on screen. It would transcribe that. And then I would have like these jumbled words of 1100 words or so in 20 minutes that I would have to then edit and clean up. So I have found that the crucial piece for me as a writer is I need to work on something that's already started. And I did start this session doing that. And then I can move into actually creating new words and everybody's different. Um, some people don't, don't, don't do that specifically. So I'm going to keep writing here. Um, you're beautiful. The ballroom entered. I do like this bit here. Um, the gentleman. Yeah, that's going to be Mr. Darcy asking that. Um, Elizabeth, um, And then I like Jane. I know I have a line here where I was like, Jane says, don't worry, I'll keep them. Yeah, do not worry. I know how to keep them out of trouble. Lord Bromington. Um, and so this is where I would continue going with the story and everything like that. But I am going to be honest and say that my head is now starting to really, really pound. So we're going to pause it here for right now, I think. And I will see where I'm at. I'm at 32,466. Okay, that's not quite a thousand words. So we need a little bit more. We can push. We'll push till I get at least a thousand new words on this, on this story. Okay, I know how to keep them out of trouble. 
but over on the far side, uh, Lydia and Kitty were, were talking. Um, Elizabeth frowned. Jane had already abandoned poor Mr. Bingley and was seeking out their sisters. All right, and let's see what Wright has to say now. Uh, so I've got to change my key details. So I'm going to take that out and we'll just click right again. So I don't think that there was more that I could do here. I'm George Wickham. No, you're in the wrong story suit. All right, you're drunk. Darcy's in the music. Please continue to bingle. Approached by Lady Bromington. Yeah, it doesn't understand who these characters are. She felt the strength of his hand, his warmth. I don't think his eyes are blue. I'd have to check on that. No, it's not a waltz. It's a reel. And there's no Georgiana. So yeah, this is a part where it just doesn't have, it doesn't know what's supposed to happen in my story. So I really do have to, I really do have to direct it with key details. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say Elizabeth and Mr. Darcy dance. They are dancing a reel, not a waltz. I will tell that detail. Okay, there we go. Now, right. All right, let me check the comments here. Gotta go. This is cool. Thank you. Yeah, I think we're going to be wrapping up here very quickly. I just, I'm being petty and I want at least a thousand words today. So I'm not, not giving up. I've got 200 more words I got to basically add. This is terrible. I don't like that stuff. Try again. This is me being greedy. There we go. Not a plan to help the grants. All right. Let's go more creative here. You can just expand. Yeah, I mean, I began with um, describe and expanded and exist back then, but describe when I first started writing with pseudo write in November of 2021. No, there's no waltz. And this is another problem where I'm just trying to make the AI write everything. Okay. Maybe I can just use expand. I don't think. Expand. They're dancing a reel, not a waltz. Hmm. Aha. There we go. Oh, cool. Perfect. Oh, that's, it got it. That's exactly what I wanted. Thank you, pseudo, right? <laughs> that is exactly what I wanted. It works. <laughs> I wanted to show that like, there's stuff going on there. And then we must open the ball. Okay, so now what?
no, there's no waltz. No waltzing. Waltzing does not exist yet. Um, so we like this here. So I'm going to push enter here. So we have this. That's already done. Wait, she sees. Uh, have a plan. But I, I need to specify what the plan is. Perfect. Of course, Darcy demurs and says, not here. So I'm going to grab this and click expand. Yeah, Pseudorite loves to waltz. The waltz didn't come into 1813. Um, yeah, it will be able to be available later. Okay. Um, I like this. I like that too. Move that down, put this here, but I want, um, more description here. Let's see here. That's 80 words, so I can click expand. You can only expand up to 100 words. So I always try to make sure I have. And so uh, we have this information here. Um, and it did that thing where it, it started to read down below. It doesn't know that I want that expanded. So we'll try just that, that part. Okay. That works and I'll rewrite that so it sounds better. But it's the gist of what I wanted. And the music swelled. Oh, I like that detail too. And then that's where I would click some rewrite functions here. I'm going to rewrite. Uh, let's try more intense and see what it gives me. Blared? No, there's no speaker. Oh, I like that. Maelstrom of energy that whirled around the room. Perfect. They moved around each other with a heightened sense of awareness. Their eyes never straying from the other space. Like that too. Better. Um, Elizabeth felt a fire in her chest as if her love for her husband had become so strong. Was nah, that's a little too much. <laughs> we went a little too far there. I love that his strong arm guided her securely and protectively around the room. I just like that one. She was deeply grateful. Uh, I think just for his strong, we don't need all of that. We just need for his strong arm, guiding her gracefully and protective, guiding her. I think not gracefully, protectively. Like that. Getting used to the way the rewrites and the other information is presented is half the battle for me. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely a, a learning curve. 
And I don't know if she also took joy in feeling the slight movements of her. Uh, that's a little bit too much information there. Yeah, I'm going to cut that. That's a little squick. Um, as the song came to an end, many eyes in the room came upon them, glancing about. I like it. Elizabeth spotted. All right, we have reached over a thousand words added to those manuscript total. Holy Luya. <laughs> it was only like an hour and 20 minutes, but uh, we did that. Um, let's see. Yeah, uh, let's see where I'm at with the words here. Cause I, I was I was greedy. I was like clicking the button as many times as I could. And it's quite a bit because I generated a lot that I didn't use. And that a lot of that has to do with me. I didn't know what I wanted. And so definitely planning in advance what you want to write is a big, a big help because it's so grand total, we use 7,700 AI words generated to get a thousand words added to the manuscript. But um, I am definitely in a good direction here and I would be able to, to keep going with the, with the words. So let me go ahead and stop sharing that and we'll go back to the main uh, person here. Just me. So there you go. That is a little bit of a, a little over an hour of me showing how I would write. Are there any last minute questions before I go ahead and say thank you to everyone and end the stream? I really appreciate all of you who, who stuck around. And I'm just pausing and waiting for um, comments and stuff to pop in as there is a delay of about a minute between where I'm working and, and people are, are answering. Any questions? Thank you so much for coming to the first one. Let me know if you think that we would do that now. Uh, let me know if you do that now. Let me know if you would like to do more of these live streams. I can do more sessions of uh, live streaming uh, writing. I'll have a better plan next time. Uh, the whole point of this was to show like how you could use PseudoWrite to jump into a manuscript that you already have. And you have to like read up and kind of get where you are and then, and then see how you could use it. Great. Well, thank you everyone. Um, we do have office hours. There's links down in the description of this where there's links for classes that we teach for free, PseudoWrite 101, but also on Wednesdays, if you click that calendar link, um, there's also uh, office hours on Wednesdays. Um, I don't think PseudoWrite specifically writes without adverbs. You can ask it to. I, it's trying to match what I already write. So if I don't write with a lot of adverbs, it's not in there. All right. I'll catch you all in the Slack um, or in classes. And yes, it is, uh, it is $29 a month if you go month to month right now for 90,000 words. Good. Great. Thank you. All right. I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much.